Mm. Ben Youngs was, I thought, our basically England's best player because the the pack was sort of as competent as they ever are, and any backline impetus we ever had was from was from Youngs. It obviously it all died as soon as he gave the ball to Farrell, but his runs and his his basically speed, weirdly. I think it was one of the only things that we did quite well. And then when Robson came on, he was not good. <laughs> so, so Young's is staying. Um, um, bring Randall on the bench then. Because again, he's on form. Is he the answer? No, because he still makes random decisions. He still kicks the ball out on the full. But Italy started the third choice Gloucester scrum half, <laughs> whose quality... He's, he's also not- 19. Mm. He's yeah. he is quality, like quality. BBC commentators, of course, I didn't know all the ITV guys didn't have a clue who he was. But <laughs> quality player, they pick him on form, get him in. Yes, they lost by fifty points, but he's going to be he, if he's if Steve Vines the Italy fly up scrum out for the next ten years until he's twenty nine. He he's going to be one hell of a player. Yeah, nobody will remember this game. It will lock 50 point loss to France. Randall, we're playing Italy next week. Oh, there's a part of me that would love Italy to win because it, then that would mean Jones would get fired. <laughs> no joke. But Is that, I mean, there's absolutely no way Jones gets fired. I just think um, we've got to change it up. It's just, you can't butcher a seven on three. You can't butcher a six on four. You can't have a mindset of international rugby where no one at international level goes, all right, we're in our own half. We're going to play three phases and kick. Ireland did 17 phases yesterday, didn't go anywhere, and then kicked. And then they turned the line out over for the resulting thing. It's just like, I'm not going to come on here. People are going to be like, oh, Farrell's passed it, blah, 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 blah. He's not. He's just not on form. So don't pick him. I don't care if he's the captain. There's plenty of other captains. They keep chatting about Marrow. Well, make Marrow the captain. See if he's any good. If he's not, not a problem. Someone else can be the captain. Doesn't matter. They're 23 blokes who can get themselves up for a game. One of the weird things about the Six Nations where, because it's such a big deal in and of itself, for the teams who, well, basically for England and Ireland, usually it's every fixture because the Six Six Nations is half the fixtures these teams play all year, and two of the other, th- well, three of the other f- five are against Australia, South Africa, and New Zealand. So you can't do anything interesting in those games, and then you have to win the Six Nations, or you have to do everything you possibly can to win the Six Nations. So, hence you get this situation where Johnny Sexton has played every get or started every game at ten for Ireland since O'Gara retired, mm. because every basically every game is a must win, so they have to pick the best player. And then similarly with England, because in theory this is the, I mean not really even in theory, this is one of the most talented England teams that certainly anyone our age has ever seen and. Most people think it's the best since the 2003 team. They have to treat it like literally every game is England's to lose and, or at least pick a team that should win every game. There's never any room for trying something different. You just have to pick the team that's going to win or do everything you can to win this game, not a game in five years' time, which is obviously a luxury that Italy have because... Like, what have they got to lose? Mm. But France are, France are picking like that at the moment because they're picking to win the World Cup in 2023. Like, completely logically, because it's in France. And it's... Obviously, England are basically doing that. But now is the time to find out that if Owen Farrell gets injured in the first game of the World Cup... Now is the time to find out what you do. Yeah. Not that get not that day, not that evening when Eddie I Jones think. sits down at the table and thinks, oh, it's with whoever's left of his assistant coaches and thinks, 
oh shit, we haven't tried anything else. <laughs> right. They've got to do it at some point. I'll propose, I, I put together a starting 15 um, for Italy. Um, gen, these are generally who I generally think should start, and you can disagree with me. Some of them you're going to, you'll get to number five and you, you'll generally raise your eyebrow, but there's some really good rationale for number five. So I'd go Genge, um, Cowan Dickey, and Stewart, because at the moment there's not a lot else. Williams and Stewart are interchangeable for me. Atoje for and make captain. Now this is my first surprise. Who's not? He's not in the squad yet, so someone's getting kicked out. Dave Atwood. <laughs> <laughs> he's the best second row. He's the best English second row at the moment. He's quality at the moment. Well, do you remember what I just said? <laughs> <laughs> but he might make it. Look at Alwyn Jones. He's a qualified barrister by the time the next World Cup comes oh. around. I like Dave Atwood. Sorry, Dave. I love him. I th- he's he might yeah. be my favorite player at the moment. Then I had, yeah. I thought I can't remember what I had. Then I had Jack uh, Willis at six, Curry, Benno, Youngs, Smith, a dog who on the left wing, Lawrence, Slade, May, Maylings. Okay. So, sort of do these one at a time. Highest profile to lead to lowest profile. Like, do we need to pick Marcus Smith? Because George Ford is Marcus Smith, but better and more established. Yeah, and already in the squad. Yeah, but Marcus Smith, but basically our French Matteo Jalibert. No, but that's George Ford. Is he? Come yeah, on. that is such a disrespect oh, to Matteo. I'm sorry, Matteo, you are not George Ford. Oh, he's so good. Matteo Jalibert is so much better than George Ford. He's a bit faster, but playmaking, Ford is Ford is really good. Like the, we you not you and I both know this Leicester team, how terrible they are without him. Yes. And how actually genuinely good they are with him. That's he can do that to England. Like that seven on two, no matter how many times Eddie Jones has beaten him in training for <laughs> passing rather than kicking. If I George Ford comes up and takes a seven right. on two, there's absolutely no way he's going to kick it. I think he probably, though I would pick Smith and I'll stand by Marcus Smith because he is Matteo Jaliba in disguise um, and he's the future. Um, I reckon he will start Ford at 10 against Italy. I hope so. At the same at the same time, play Farrell, let him get into Ford. He could do what he wants. He's probably going to go back to Ford. He's going to go back to Ford Farrell, isn't he? He's going to do that, isn't he? He's exactly what he's going to do. He's going to drop Ollie Lawrence out of the whole 23. He'll be back to Worcester. We won't see Ollie Lawrence again. That could happen. Nah, Ford, Ford Farrell Lawrence, I think. That's most likely. Please. And then back three will stay the same. Oh, come on. Where's Paolo? No, I don't want it to. But oh, I just think get it, Paolo in, please. Has to be on the bench, mate. I want to see. They will I want to see Paolo Doku versus Ioni in a foot race. That's what I want to see. That's the only battle I want to see next weekend. I didn't realise his uncle is Digby Ioni until the other day. Oh, the no. um, the Italian winger. Yeah. Fun fact. Um, anyone else? Well, think, are we, are we done with England? Uh, Read some Scots. On the, on the back row, I think if you're not going to pick Vunapola, you need to pick Wilson. Um, and I'm not sure how fit Willis is. I don't think you need to. I don't think Willis needs. To, I don't think Wilson needs to play against this today. Yeah, but think of the damage he would do. Hmm. Their pack is so young. Paul can do that against a... So what? different. Such know. a different threat. I, but, I, yeah, I, we'll, we're again, obviously going to beat them. But oh, could you Wilson's... Imagine? Don't know. <laughs> He's so funny. Could you imagine if they win? Oh. 
Wow, I, I actually want that to happen. Because oh, it'd be fantastic. But it won't happen because uh, England will be fired up and I think we'll be 30 points up by half, half an hour. But yeah. um, Should we pray some Scots? Because Scotland are very good. I reckon they'll come second in the Six Nations at the moment. Oh, they're pretty good. Weird how Scotland-Wales is now the big game. Oh, yeah. Is that next week? Yeah. Oh, well, I, they beat, if they win next week, they're second because they'll beat Italy and they'll lose to France. Oh, they've got to beat Ireland as well. Absolutely good point. I think they'll beat Ireland as well. Awesome. Um, Van der Merwe is going to be uh, in the Lions, isn't he? On this form. Yeah, if not this one, definitely the next one. Because he looks bloody good. Yeah. Anyone else you picked out that, apart from the obvious? I mean, Stuart Hogg was brilliant, but again, Stuart Hogg, Stuart Hogg. Finn Russell was good, apart from his thought he was playing for football. He, interesting, there was a stat about Owen Farrell had more touches than him in the game, which is interesting. It sort of shows up how England were poor. Yeah, fly, and also fly half compared to 15. No, Russell had more touches, uh, less touches than Farrell. Sorry. Oh, all right. Um. Hmm. It was quite. I'm just looking at this. BBC Sport have got this the wrong way around. It's quite funny. Gary Graham apparently came on for Z um, uh, Ferguson, the, the tired prop. But obviously it's WP now. But um, no, it's Matt Ferguson, the number eight. Hmm. His brother. But it was good to see Richie Gray back into the Scotland shirt. I thought he looked quite good when he came on for his yeah. 14. So actually, I have got a bit of. I don't know if you guys have noticed this about the Scotland scrum. Do you? It's a um, it's a big, not quite bugbear because it's a good thing, but a sort of favourite topic of Alex Corbusiero, where there's a new sort of slowly developing scrummaging technique for second rows and number eights, where rather than you having so. Let's imagine I'm the right hand, I'm the tie head lock. So on the right hand side, I've got my right arm up between the props legs, yeah. my left arm over the, um, yeah. over the other second row. That stays the same. Mm. So for the second rows, that stays the same. But then the number eight, where usually the sort of usual technique is either a sort of slingshot thing or starting bound, but with your legs close. Yeah what teams are starting to do and particularly on their defensive scrum because it's so much more solid and there's not so much of a like active forward push it's just a hold and be stronger and be lower they start both second rows on their knees and then the number eight with his arms through the second rows legs like the second rows have on the props and then the eight also starts on his knees. And then the whole scrum, when they go to set, the whole scrum just sort of pops up onto its toes. And then everybody is super low because you've, you've just gone from having your knees on the ground to having your knees six inches off the ground. And everyone is low and tight already and you're not going anywhere. And the, the, that's one of the reasons that the Scotland scrum was so good this weekend. Mm. I've explained that very well. It's much easier to demonstrate on a scrummaging machine. Um, but yeah, a bit of bit of scrum nerd stuff, which I think more teams will start to use. It's a good one to keep an eye out for on the overhead spider cams. Mm. Look at where the number eight's arms are. They'll either be underneath or out wide. You look at Corbus Sierra's Twitter account. He's got a good breakdown of it. I would just say very quickly on Scotland, just as I say, massive kudos to them again. A lot, everyone was very praised and they were very, very good. I would just, just use this momentum, Scotland. Like, don't you're not going to win the Six Nations. That is not realistic because France is going to win it. And if anyone thinks differently, fine. But that's your choice. But it's you can't it's, you cannot argue with what we saw on on Saturday. But take that if they if Scotland got second. I can't remember in my lifetime that Scotland ever, have they ever finished second. I can't think back to a time in my when in my lifetime certainly. Not. So please take the please go beat Wales next week. 
because you're better than Wales on the form from the game we got yesterday. Yes, you can beat Ireland if you play like that that you did against England. Yes, you'll beat Italy. I don't. You won't beat France because France are on a different planet. But a second place to Scotland would be bloody good. So please don't do what you've done in the past, which is beat England and then finish fourth. 